You can use if and else if to repeatedly check conditions as much as you want to, but it can get awfully hard to read sometimes. For example, if we had a weather forecast, uh, like this one here, as an enum weather, case sun, rain, wind, snow, and unknown, plus a constant called forecast equal to weather.sun. We could check those values using if, else, if, again, 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 to check them all and print out various appropriate messages using code like this. We could say, if it's sunny forecast, print, it should be a nice day. If it's rainy, pack an umbrella. If it's windy, wear something warm. If it's rainy, school's canceled. Otherwise, print out our forecast generator is broken. And that code works. That's valid Swift, but it has multiple problems. First up, we keep having to repeat ourselves. Forecast, 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 forecast. We're checking the same thing again, and again, and again, but writing it out repeatedly is quite tiresome. Second, I've accidentally checked rain twice. We've got rain, pack an umbrella, and rain school is cancelled. That was a mistake. I didn't mean to check rain the second time around. In fact, I meant to check snow. Snow is currently not being checked, so we're missing functionality. School's being cancelled by accident, right? It shouldn't happen. Now we can solve all three of these problems using a different way of checking conditions called switch. This also allows us to check individual cases, sun, rain, wind, rain, unknown. But now Swift, the compiler, the program building our code, is able to help us out, do extra work on our behalf, because it knows all the possible cases of our enum, sun, rain, wind, rain, unknown. So if you check one twice, it'll complain. If you forget to check one, it will refuse to build your code. And so we can replace all the if and else if and else, all that junk can go away and replace with this code here, a switch block. Let's break it down. We start with switch forecast. We're telling Swift that's a value, forecast, that we want to check. We then have a whole range of case checks. Is it sunny, rainy, windy, snowy, or unknown? We're comparing that against forecast. Is forecast sunny? Is forecast rainy, windy, snowy, unknown? It checks the value at the top against each case down the line. Each of our cases lists exactly one weather type. And because we're switching on forecast, we haven't got to write weather.sun, weather.rain, weather.wind. Swift knows forecast is a kind of weather. That is type, and therefore all the cases are the same type. After each case, there's a colon to mark the start of the code that should be run when that is true. So if it's sunny, print, it should be a nice day. If it's rainy, print, pack an umbrella. And then at the end, you'll see a little closing brace to end the switch statement. And we go on to normal code afterwards. Now, if you're trying it in Xcode, go ahead and change snow to rain. Like I had an if and else if option, you'll see Swift complains loudly. It'll say you've checked rain twice and snow isn't checked. Swift will actually enforce that our switch blocks are exhaustive. They cover all possible cases of the values, always. They're required in Swift. Now, if you've used other languages to program before, you might realize that Swift switches are a little bit different in two key places. First up, all switch in Swift must be exhaustive. You must check all possible values uh, so you can't leave one off by accident. It's not allowed, not just enums, but also strings, integers, anything. You must always have a case for every possible result. But second up, and this catches people out if they're coming from, say, C++, um, what will happen with Swift is it'll say forecast and it'll compare against the very first case. Or the second case, third case, da, da, da. it'll do them in order. And as soon as it finds one that matches, which is in our case, will be the sun case, it will run that code. Print, it should be a nice day. But in many older languages, they'll run the first one and then carry on running the second one and the third, and the fourth, and the fifth, and so forth, they'll just carry on. And they'll keep on doing that until they reach the end of the block. And Swift does not do that. Swift will only do the bit that actually matches. And yes, this is a huge difference, but it makes so much more sense to do it this way, quite frankly. 
Now, both those two changes are, are absolutely true. Swift does give us uh, more control if we need it. First, yes, all your switches have to be exhaustive. You must ensure every possible case you're switching on is covered. Now, if you're switching on a string, clearly it is not feasible. It is impossible, quite frankly, to check every possible string ever. Case A, case AA, case AAA, case AAB. No, you wouldn't do it. It's impossible. There is an infinite number of strings out there, right? So instead of having every possible string being checked, we can provide a default case to run if none of the other cases match. So let's try this in a playground over here. I'll say uh, we have let place equals metropolis. And we're gonna switch on this place string. So I'll say uh, switch place, case Gotham. We will do print your Batman. Then case mega city one, print your uh, judge dread. Then we'll do another case, let's do Wakanda. Uh, I'll do print your Black Panther. And then for all other strings we haven't handled explicitly, a default case. Print, who are you? Like that. And this default case is it. We don't say case default, just default by itself. It'll run if all other cases have failed to match. And remember, Swift runs these checks in order. It'll check Gotham first, then Mega City 1, then Wakanda, and then finally from Metropolis, it'll get to default and print, who are you? If you place default higher up before any other case, it will always be run before that case. It'll basically make the rest of the code useless. So if I put default at the very top, none of these cases here will ever be checked. They cannot be checked because default will always run before them. In fact, Swift even issued an error. You can't have case blocks after default. It's pointless. It will never be run because default will come first. So that is the first useful thing. You can have default, have default action if none of the other cases match. Second, if you explicitly want Swift to carry on executing cases after the first one's matched, you can do that by saying, fall through, fall through. This is honestly not commonly used, but sometimes just like one in a million times, it will help you avoid repeating work. For example, there's a famous Christmas song called The 12 Days of Christmas. And as the song goes on, more and more gifts are heaped on to some poor, unfortunate person who has a, a massively full house by about day six. Uh, and we can make a simple approximation of the song using fall through. First, uh, let's have a look how, how a song might look without fall through. So I'll say, uh, let day equals five. And then we'll say print, uh, my true love gave to me, and then switch on day. If we are day five, I'll print five golden rings. If we're day four, I'll print four calling birds. If we are, let's scroll down, uh, three, I'll print three French hens. I'll print two was two uh, turtle doves. And then at the very end of the song, uh, default case is print a partridge in a pear tree. And the way the song works is on day one, you get a partridge in a pear tree. On day two, you get two turtle doves and a partridge in a pear tree. In day three, you get three French hens, two turtle doves and a partridge in a pear tree. It gets longer and longer and longer until you're out of breath at the very end, which is of course hilarious. Well, it's supposed to be when you haven't got Netflix. Anyway, um, if I run this code back now, you're gonna see it's gonna print out five golden rings. That's not what we meant, that's not quite right. Uh, we want five golden rings, four calling birds, three French hens, two little loves, and a partridge in a pear tree. And that's where fall through comes in. I can add fall through here, and here, and here, and here. What it means is, when day is five, it will run case five, print this, and then fall through to case four. 
it'll print four coiling birds, then four through to case three. Print three French hens, four through case two, two little doves, four through to default case. It'll work its way down. Let's print the code now. We should see all these things being printed out. Boom. It's not exactly the lyrics of the song, but you get the idea. So it'll match the first one, print the line, fall through again and again and again, but hopefully now you can at least see the functionality of fall through in action.